Hi there filmmakers. In this video I'm going to explain to you why it is so critical that you produce your films for little to no budget. Then I'm going to go over the top 10 rules for budgeting and finally I'm going to walk you through my must-have equipment list. Now if you have a lot of money you might be tempted to look past this and other videos on how to make a film with no budget. But if you have a lot of money, you of all people absolutely need to watch this video because you have a lot more to lose than someone with no money. Keeping a tight and strict no to low budget philosophy is very much related to the phenomenon known as Parkinson's Law, which states that work expands as to fill the time available for its completion. Give something a week to complete, it'll take you a week. Give that same something two days to complete, and it'll take two days. Now, how does that relate to filming and spending? You see, filmmaking is like a black hole for money. There's an endless supply of gear, suppliers, freelance crew, upgrades, and other costs associated with filming. Another way to look at this, a film budget is like a bucket. If the bucket holds $100 and that's all you have, that's how much your film is going to cost. If the bucket holds $10 million, you're going to find a way to fill that bucket full of $10 million, and that's how much that film is going to cost. And at the end of the day, the $10 million film may not be any better than the $100 film. I'm sure you can think of a few films that cost over $500 million that were a total waste of every dollar spent. Why is this so important? First, the film business is a business. If you were lucky enough to be hired, you would be wise to keep your budget in check so that there's a higher probability the money coming in greatly outweighs the money that went out. That's how you keep working. The reverse means you stop working. Second, there seems to be a direct correlation between creativity and money, especially when you're starting out filmmaking. More money equals less creativity. Having a bunch of money equals a boring, on-the-nose film shot like plain coverage for a theater play. The rich are at a decidedly disadvantage to the poor where creativity is concerned. As an interesting addendum to that point, there's also a direct correlation between money and creative control. The more money there is involved, the less creative control over the project you will have. The less money involved, the more creative control. Many filmmakers wish to have a $200 million budget, but if you were given this budget at your current state, you would become a slave to the producer who would tell you how to direct the film who would make poor choice after poor choice to satisfy the studio, and you'd have to follow their orders to the T or you'd get fired. Filmmakers like Spielberg, Cameron, and Fincher, to name a few, have earned their creative voice by doing smaller, less costly projects earlier in their careers. Third, and probably most importantly, any form of artistic expression, whether it be dance, music, theater, or painting, requires volume in order to grow experience. Film is no different. To get good, to grow, to become a master, you must produce a lot and you must produce often. The problem or crux here is that filmmaking can be so cost prohibitive that it makes it challenging to adhere to this most important law. Let me put this to you another way. Do you think Picasso would be Picasso if he had painted one painting every couple years? Probably not, right? Yet so many filmmakers will make a short film only every couple years. And the biggest reason for this, I believe, is that they feel they don't have the budgets to be able to do more than that at that pace. The result is that they don't grow as filmmakers. Self-financing, as you'll likely need to do when you first start out, is the only way to start filming. So rather than get sucked into the cult of equipment worship, be that kid who only had a stick to play with when the others had Star Wars Lego sets. Embrace the limitations and you'll become unsafe. Unstoppable. The last thing I'll say about filmmaking is to reiterate at the risk of ad nauseum that it can be very, very expensive and quickly too. So now that we know the why, let's jump into the how to's. 10 rules to keeping it cheap. Number one, never make your project sag. Number two, don't ever get shooting permits, ever. Number three, ask for forgiveness, never permission. Number four, try to get everyone for free. Your actors, composer, screenwriter. The jobs people won't do for free, figure out how to do them yourself. The less sexy the job, i.e. on set sound, the more likely it is you'll need to pay someone to do it. Think about doing it yourself. Number five, only use props and locations you know you have access to. This means you'll need to tailor your script to what you have not the other way around, which is the mistake most beginning filmmakers make. Number six, and this is very similar to point number four, don't use a crew. Be a one-man, one-woman band. Number seven, 
Do a rough budget of your script before you commit to the script being the way it currently is. Look for props, locations, travel, how many days of filming, how many actors in a scene, and anything special you don't have access to like costumes or effects like a fog machine. These all add up. Ask yourself, how can I do the film without these items? Number eight, sell people on why they should work on this project for free. If it's a feature, this will be a very difficult thing to do. For short, it could be experience if they truly have none. If they're an actor, it's footage for their reel, and be sure you get them their footage as soon as possible, not three years after you shoot it. If they're a composer, let them keep the rights to their music so they can potentially sell it somewhere else or license it. If they're into making props, see what you can offer them, i.e. free work for them on their project in exchange for their help on yours. Quid pro quo. Number nine, if something is going to cost money, ask yourself, how can I do this for nothing? You'd be amazed at how the human mind is wired to answer questions and to problem solve if asked the right questions. Number 10, gamify how cheap you can make your film. Try and beat your score with each film you make. You might be thinking to yourself that I'm nuts right now. You have to make it SAG. It absolutely must take place in Big Bear, and there must be a crew, a small crew made up of a DP, sound, and a PA, and just three actors, 15 minutes short, not expensive at all, right? Let's go through a bare minimum budget for that. Travel from LA, two cars, gas there and back, $100. Airbnb for three nights, $600. SAG minimum for each actor is $125. For three days, for three actors is $1,125. SAG health and pension is $90. DP is $125 a day for three days, $375. Sound is $100 a day, that's $300. The PA is free. DP's camera package is $500. Food is three meals a day for three days, seven people at $8 a meal, that's $504. Props and miscellaneous is $300. And the production total comes to $3,894. This is just for the production, not even considering post-production. Here's a taste of what post can cost for a 15 minute film. These are just ballpark numbers because you will obviously be able to negotiate for price, but I can tell you it will be difficult to get any of these post jobs for free. Sound designer, $500. Composer, $500. Editor, $500. Color grader, $500. Festival submissions, $50 per submission for 20 festivals to get into one festival, that's $1,000. And your post production total is $3,000. The grand total is $6,894 for a 15 minute film. Now, let's say you wanted to do four 15 minute films a year. At that rate, it would cost you $27,576. Keep in mind the budget I just laid out is pretty bare bones compared to a lot of budgets out there. At the end of the day, if you don't have much experience, it doesn't matter how much money you spend because of this one indelible truth. Just because you can watch films and recognize that they're good doesn't mean you can make films that are good. Watching films and making films are two totally different things. One of the biggest mistakes I see fledgling filmmakers make is that they think filmmaking will come naturally to them because they've watched a bunch of movies and know what's right. Without experience, your first films won't be good. Still think I'm nuts? How many $6,000 shorts can you make? 10, 20? How many $100 shorts can you make? I'm betting a lot more. Robert Rodriguez was a crew of one. Think he's better than you? If you don't, and I hope you don't, then what he did, you can do. I like to think in military terms. Hollywood cast and crews are like the army. I'm like the special forces. I'm the tip of the sword. Precision, in and out, and deadly. Like David Fincher, join the global fan club. He famously said his goal was to learn each major film crew job to the point he could do it just as well, if not better than they could. This is brilliant. Today's wisdom du jour is teaching people to think like a business owner. Delegate the roles. Use this in every aspect of your life to grow rich and successful. But what works for growing a business is not the best strategy for becoming a filmmaker. Rather, you must think like a craftsman. And a craftsman may delegate, but they understand well enough what they're delegating to know when it's being done properly and when it's not. In other words, details matter. Think of it this way. You're like a general contractor and you're delegating each job to a bunch of subs. You know their jobs well, but you're still orchestrating from a top level. So learn each trade by doing it on your own first, and then when you become David Fincher number two, you can delegate well. Here's my bare bones list of must have equipment. Many devout members of the cult of equipment will do everything they can to convince you you cannot make a film without fill in the blank expensive object. Cut through their mind fog, navigate past their tricks, do not listen to their advice. First, the camera. Tangerine, the film, was shot entirely on an iPhone. 
If you want to get a DSLR, the Canon Rebel T6 is a fine choice. For the mic, you can get some ridiculously cheap mics. I would spend just a little bit more to get a fine shotgun mic. Rode Shotgun NTG2 is $269. If you really want to spend some money, go with the Sennheiser MKE600 for $329. Some people will say you need a boom pole and a blimp and a dead wombat. Guess what? No, you don't. Mount the mic on your camera, and if you're too far away from your subjects to catch their dialogue, get wild lines of the dialogue after filming and Frankenstein your audio in post. Trust me, you can do this. This will also teach you to lay off the dialogue. Believe me, this is a good thing unless you're Tarantino number two. Hint, you probably aren't. For the tripod, I recommend the Monfrotto 502AH video head and tripod for $349. This is the tripod I love and use. Get a shock mount with a hot shoe for a cold shoe mount. For the bag, get a $50 bag. Any bag will do. That's all the equipment you need to begin. Seriously. Now, to wrap all of this up, I want to address two points. The first point, me. You might be wondering, but you use more equipment than that to film your shorts. Yes, I do. It's very slim compared to most, and I grew into that equipment over time. And if I could go back in time, I would greatly reduce what I bought. Mistakes were made. I'm trying to save you from the same mistakes. And over time, as you get better, you'll begin to realize what is really important for you and what you can afford. Be very judicious here. Second, I want to point out that the thing you most want to guard against is becoming a disciple and worshiper of the cult of equipment. Far too many people use the latest gear, testing that gear, and learning about that gear as a form of procrastination. By becoming gearheads, they are avoiding doing the work, which is writing the script and filming the film. If you're serious about filmmaking, you must learn the tech because tech makes up the tools we need, but do not become a slave to them as so many have. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some valuable information from it. This is part one of what I intend to be a multi-series. Please let me know in the comments section what you think about what I just presented to you. And if you enjoyed this, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking below.